Biden and others responsible for the worst foreign policy disaster in modern history. That's the grim reality we face in tonight's preamble. The news gets worse by the hour in the wake of Biden's monumental screw-up in Afghanistan. We are now learning that Team Biden allowed Black Hawk helicopters and A-29 Super Tucano attack aircraft to fall into the hands of the terrorist Taliban. We can add to this a long list of Democrat socialist failures. We learned that Joe Biden refused to prioritize American citizens in the ongoing evacuation from Afghanistan. Think about that for a minute. The government that you and I fund refuses to prioritize our own people who are in harm's way. Now, I'd expect nothing less from a foreigner's first political party and administration. The Secretary of Defense confirming the lack of ability of Biden's government to safeguard American citizens. But that doesn't answer the question. I mean, you're still saying you're focused on the airfield. They, these people can't get into the airfield. Well, we're going to do everything we can to uh, continue to try to uh, deconflict uh, and, and create uh, uh, passageways for them to get to the airfield. I don't have the capability to go out and, and extend operations currently into, uh, into uh, Kabul. Man, Biden's incompetence was further displayed when America heard from Mr. White Rage himself, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mark Milley. There was nothing that I or anyone else saw that indicated a collapse of this army and this government in 11 days. Hmm. Critics and people with common sense have suggested if General Milley and so-called other leaders were, were less focused on advancing division in the United States military through critical race theory and instead focused on, you know, the job they were hired to do, which is to make sure our fighting force is the most lethal on the planet, Milley and company might have seen the obvious outcome of Biden's dumb plan to withdraw from Afghanistan. That plan included Abandoning our bases, including Bagram Air Base, that base could have been used to facilitate the evacuation out of Afghanistan with two runways, not just one like the airport in Kabul. Biden's plan included taking our military forces out of Afghanistan before getting our civilians out of Afghanistan. And despite Mark Milley's head-in-the-sand posture, it's been widely reported that Biden's generals and his State Department warned Biden his plan was flawed. Biden said this about those discussions. So no one, no one told your military advisors did not tell you, no, we should just keep 2,500 troops. It's been a stable situation for the last several years. We can do that. We can continue to do that. No, no one said that to me that I can recall. <laughs> Biden can't remember his conversations with his own generals. America is in danger with such an incompetent in the White House. We learned yesterday that the Taliban may be in possession of a hard drive tower containing the biodata of all of the Afghans who aided the United States. If true, that will be a death sentence for thousands of people of color and their families in Afghanistan. This act of a complete and utter drooling idiot will prompt America's allies to never trust us again. They will never bank their safety on the chance that American voters would pull the lever for a complete and utter moron who will lead to their deaths out of indifference or stupidity. Who is responsible for this calamity? Not the calamity that is Afghanistan, but the calamity that is the Biden occupation of the Oval Office. Well, we can thank every Democrat socialist in Congress. They have remained silent in the wake of the catastrophe in Afghanistan, choosing their party over our country, as they typically do. We can thank never-Trump Republicans like Liz Cheney, Adam Crying Kinsinger, Bill Kristol, the founders of the Lincoln Project. They felt perfectly comfortable doing all of this damage to the United States to avoid mean tweets. And we can thank every Democrat voter who thought it would be res a, a responsible thing to do to vote for a socialist incompetent, to vote for a man they knew has been wrong on every major foreign policy over the last 40 years. It's time the United States charted a different course away from the least gifted and most anti-American among us. If we don't, America won't be around much longer. 
Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.